Let's find one, because that's not very typical. It's very cool, that's not very typical. We'll find you sort of a typical. Here you go. Okay. So, uh, thermal production usually happens in plastic rocks. And plastic rocks, it's all about the grains of sand and then the crossing between the grains of sand. And in some ways, at a core scale, it looks very uniform. So you get a sand pile. Hey guys, do we have sand at the top of this one? Is there else got sand? Yeah. Okay, come look at this. So this is... Uh, oh, it's not filled with oil, which is too bad. But boy, nice, uh, nice ripples, crossbeds. Anyways, this is a sandstone. So usually what happens, this is filled with oil. You look at something like this and you can say, this porosity taken from this piece of rock represents my whole reservoir. And that's what we've been doing for 30 years. And we drill horizontal wells and we push steam in, we pull oil out, and we produce the rock. That's where we came from. Carbonates are a different beast, and it's a totally different rock, because your porosity system is not between the grains of sand. Um, your porosity system is made up of holes, actually, in the rock. So those are um, holes and fractures. And then there is some porosity in the, what we call the matrix, the rock part itself, too. But it's a very different mechanism. And so you have a whole different assessment techniques. And so when we're talking about production from this, we need, we need to produce through, we need to understand that fracture system that we need to produce out of it. We are coming back to the carbonates now with all the skills of having produced the plastic. So all the horizontal technology, the electric submersible pumps, people like Chi with their big brains who know how to operate thermal pilots. Um, and we're coming back to this rock and we bring and hire people who are carbonate experts like Anne, who hasn't worked thermal before, but she knows these carbonate rocks. So now she has to look at them with a new set of eyes of saying, now that instead of being filled with gas, which is typically what happens in our Western Canada sedimentary basin, or oil, if you're lucky, uh, they're filled with 7 API, 2 million, 3 million centipoise oil. If you have that type of viscosity, you need to have incredible permeability. And that is what the Grossmont offers us. And it's just a, it's a remarkable reservoir. 